Hello, my name is Joel Hartley. I'm a sales engineer from Trend Micro, and today we're going to be showing you how to migrate hosted email security to the new Trend Micro email security platform. On the agenda, we'll be going through migration prerequisites uh, and some notes uh, to show you the data that will be migrated and will, what will not be migrated. And then I'll show you a video walkthrough of what the migration procedure actually looks like. For you to be able to migrate, you need to have an existing hosted email security account uh, that is valid and licensed, uh, and you also need to be licensed for Trend Micro email security standard or advanced. If you haven't yet obtained an activation code from Trend Micro, uh, please contact either your reseller or your Trend Micro account rep, uh, and they'll be able to help you with obtaining a key. Uh, it's very important that both of these keys are registered in the same customer licensing portal account for the migration to be successful. You need to have Exchange admin access, whether it's for Exchange or Exchange Online or Gmail, wherever your email is, and you need to be able to change your DNS records. Uh, we'll be adding new SPF and MX records and a, a couple of other text records, uh, depending on individual circumstances. And if there is any existing restrictions on your SMTP traffic, such as rules that would block SMTP traffic from anywhere except the current IP ranges that are supported by hosted email security, you'll need to be ready to change those as well to support the new service. A couple of important notes. The migration procedure itself is not service impacting until you change the MX record uh, to point it to the new service. The, uh, the service will effectively copy and paste all of your configuration, but it won't make any changes to either hosted email security or Trend Micro email security uh, with the traffic or the, the existing flow of email. Uh, everything will change only after you change the MX record at the end. And the existing hosted email security account will stay valid and working until your license expires or until the platform is permanently retired, which you'll have a warning for, whichever comes first. So if you feel like you need to roll back for any reason, uh, the service is still there. We're not removing any data or changing any of the configuration in hosted email security during this procedure. Uh, anything that you've set as a policy, domain settings, uh, rule orders, uh, recipient filters, end user managed accounts, branding settings, approving block senders, effectively anything that, that you've set as a policy will be copied over. Um, the domain key identified mail uh, settings and uh, the signing settings will all carry over. Uh, your existing DMARC enforcement settings uh, and most of the digest settings except for the end user quarantine accounts because the URL will change for that. Uh, everything that is in the account as a, a previous setting will carry over. And the only things that will not carry over, uh, mail, existing mail tracking logs, uh, quarantine messages and event logs, uh, and basically anything that can't be, uh, can't be copied for, for different reasons and your existing quarantine will stay in place. Now, as you can see here, we have both hosted email security and Trend Micro email security standard in the same customer licensing portal account. Now, this is very, very important. Uh, since the Trend Micro email security will recognize that hosted email security is already there and offer to migrate the settings for you. If you've set up a new customer licensing portal instance, the migration will not be successful. You won't have the option of migrating your configuration from one account to the other, and you will need to go through Trend Micro technical support to be able to move your domains into the new account. Now, within hosted email security, uh, we're just going to jump through here and see that we have this domain set up. It is actually uh, up and operational. Uh, ThreatDefense.net is uh, linked to Office 365, and we have uh, set that up uh, previously. Uh, and we're, this is successfully up and running. We have mail flowing through this. Uh, I have uh, set all of my policies. I have some custom policies here. I've uh, disabled exceeding message size policy and the password protection policy, and I've added some custom ones there for inbound. Uh, also, the, uh, the scan exceptions, uh, just as an example, uh, I've altered all of the actions for those as well. In the outbound protection, I've also enabled all of the policies, and I do have live traffic uh, flowing through this account outbound as well. Uh, all of my, uh, my logs and events will remain in this account, 
but all of my policies and everything that I've set from uh, recipient filters and uh, approved and blocked senders will carry over into the new account, including the existing configuration. Now, I'll jump straight back into the customer licensing portal account here, and we're going to open Trend Micro Email Security Standard for the first time. Now, as the page loads, the first thing that's going to pop up is this migration wizard. And you're going to see here that there is the option to migrate data from hosted email security. Uh, you have the option not to if you wanted to set it up from scratch, um, but today we are migrating data. Uh, so I'll just go next. And from here, it will run through a brief procedure uh, where it will uh, copy and paste all of the existing configuration into the new account. This process will take about 60 seconds or so uh, to complete and you'll get everything with a green tick at the end there to show that it has been final. But as you can see, we've now copied all of the settings over, the migration has been completed, uh, and we're gonna go through to the provisioning stage. Now, just a, a couple of normal steps here. Uh, I'm going to send my uh, verification code and it's going to uh, just give you a text message that shows uh, the, uh, the verification code. And simple enough. And once that is done, you're now going to set a, a new custom company identifier. Now this step is pretty important. The identifier that you set needs to be all one word uh, and it needs to identify you specifically as it will form part of the MX record and the relay record that you use for any domains that you register in this particular tenant. Uh, so in this case, I'm just going to use the name of my domain, which is threat defense. Uh, verify to make sure that it is currently available and we've got the green tick so we can move on. Uh, and from there, we're now ready to complete. Uh, now at this stage, there is going to be an email confirmation to say that the domain has been registered and another one to verify your domain. Uh, just follow the instructions that you get uh, to be able to complete those steps just to uh, verify your account. Okay, so now you can see that the domain has been successfully added, uh, but we've still got some configuration required. Obviously, I haven't changed the MX record yet. I also have not yet updated uh, my Office 365 uh, ready for the new service, and we'll show you through that in a moment. Now, being that this uh, particular region is for ANZ, uh, and the data center here uh, for ANZ has its own IP ranges, uh, you can see those published here. Each individual region uh, will have its own data center and the IP ranges will vary. Uh, so keep an eye on that. Um, if you're in the ANZ region, these two IP ranges are the only ones that you'll need for this particular service. We're going to test the connection to make sure that I can reach my Office 365 and I can. And here you'll also find your new MX record. Now this MX record, as I mentioned, is globally exclusive and, and the company identifier that we've just set is part of that record. As we scroll down a little bit further, uh, we've got the outbound protection enabled. You'll see that there is a new SPF record here and also uh, threat defense as my identifier is part of the new relay. We're now going to continue and just make sure that everything that I set before as a policy uh, has been copied over successfully uh, from either account. And they are broken up a little bit differently here. So uh, instead of having one big long list of policies, we've got a few separate ones. Uh, but uh, if we go into the spam policies, for example, you'll see that they're set exactly as I left them. Uh, the content filtering, which is high risk attachment and my custom policies here, including the ones that I disabled, I uh, still here as well, and my custom keyword policy is there uh, with the actions that I set for it. Uh, much the same with the outbound filtering. My uh, policies are exactly the same as they were in hosted email security. And you can see all of those there, including the policies that I disabled. Now, at this point, it's worth noting that hosted email security has not changed. It's still completely functional and operational at this stage. We have not impacted any traffic at all uh, by copying those settings over into the new account. Now that we have the new account up and running, the next stage will be to update your exchange. In my case, it's Office 365, but it could be a local exchange uh, to be able to accept uh, traffic from the new service. 
hosted email security uh, will already have connectors and rules in place here. If we jump into mail flow and into connectors, uh, hosted email security uh, has already got the connectors here for inbound and outbound that go through um, and will show you the uh, records that you've got set uh, for uh, for hosted email security to be able to deliver and send emails on your behalf. Uh, so as before, uh, you're going to either adjust this connector or create a separate connector, and I'm going to create a separate connector to add the new IP ranges that we are using for the new service. So uh, this particular one is the outbound connector, only to be used when I've got a transport rule, uh, and you can see I've got my existing relay dot hes.trendmicro.com. And if I now go and find the email security outbound uh, connector, uh, this has been updated now to support exactly the same rule type, uh, but with the uh, specific relay that we have uh, for the new account. Okay. Uh, same for inbound and outbound. Uh, for inbound, you'll obviously need to uh, add the IP ranges to support the new service and you can see those 13.238 ranges just there for the ANZ specific region. We'll also need to update the mail flow rules. So there is some um, uh, spam bypass uh, rules in place that you can see support the existing hosted email security ranges. Again, you can update the existing rule if you like and just have one uh, rule that covers all of the ranges. Uh, for me, I've created a separate one uh, that is uh, for the two uh, ranges supported by Trend Micro email security. And that just means that later on I can disable and then remove the hosted email security rules once all of the changes take effect. And uh, same thing with the email security outbound. Uh, I've set that, uh, that rule up, although you would not uh, create the new outbound connector and enable it until after the MX record has changed. This one is turned on because my service has completed the migration stage, uh, but uh, normally you would not enable the outbound filtering until after you've changed the MX record to the new service. Now that everything is prepared, the only thing left to do is to update all of your DNS records to point to the new service and to adjust anything that needs to be adjusted, including adding the new SPF record. Uh, one thing I will mention is if you have a DKIM record published, just double check to make sure that the record uh, that you have published uh, from hosted email security matches with what has been migrated into your Trend Micro email security. And that has copied across with no issue. Uh, so we don't need to replace the domain key identified mail key. With that done, there's just a couple of things that we need to do. One of them will be to update your uh, text records uh, that you have for domain keys or anything else, uh, including your SPF record to make sure that it's included. The hosted email security domain verification key has carried over into the new email security as well, so you don't need to replace that one. Um, however, you will need to update the SPF record here uh, if you're using outbound filtering and the MX record, of course. Uh, but we'll start by updating the text record here. Uh, if we jump back into the Trend Micro email security and go into domains again, open our domain, at the bottom of this screen, there is the SPF record that you'll need uh, to support. And we'll just add that into the existing text record. We won't need to create a new one. Uh, so I'll edit this one and uh, let's add this one in. And we'll just pop and include in here to add that one. And we can save that on the normal uh, TTL. And I need to adjust that. And it's now part of the record. And then we can go over here now, grab the new MX record. Please make sure that you're using the MX record and not the relay record. They are on the same page, so just be aware of that and I'm going to now go and change the MX record. Now today I'm changing this straight over from one to the other. You can, uh, for uh, safety's sake, if you choose, uh, add a second MX record with a different priority. Uh, for example, I can 
go here and add a, a, a record with 20 just to make sure that the service comes up. In this case, I'm not going to do that. Uh, I will just change this straight over and, and I can save that. And this service will obviously update in the next few minutes. Once the annex record is changed, within a few minutes, you should be able to see that uh, you can verify the account. And instead of having this message here that says the MX records are not pointed to the Trend Micro email security server, we'll hit verify and we'll be able to see that that changes to tell us that the service is now live. This one's only taken a few seconds and we've followed through on verify and we can see that that is now successfully verified. The traffic is now live for the domain and we can also verify the USPF record and that has been successfully verified as well. And we already had the domain verified with the verification key from hosted email security that migrated over by the new settings. So for all intents and purposes, the migration procedure is complete. Uh, there's not much else that needs to be done at this stage, but again, hosted email security uh, will have now updated uh, to show that the domain is no longer being hosted. Uh, if we try and, and verify this particular account now, uh, it should now fail to verify completely. In the inbound, uh, the inbound settings, you see the MX records are not pointed to the hosted email security server, but all of your other configuration remains the same. If you choose to roll back, for any reason, if there's uh, any challenges, uh, which we don't anticipate, the, need, the service is still there until the license expires or until the service is shut down permanently, uh, which is due to happen uh, sometime in 2022. On behalf of everybody at Trend Micro, I'd like to thank you for joining us today. Uh, that is the end of the presentation. However, if you have any further questions, please feel free to reach out to us or to your reseller uh, for any assistance that you need with setting up your Trend Micro email security account. Thank you and enjoy the rest of your day.